Good day, everyone. Welcome to Africa Talks 9. Today, we are very excited to have Ashraf Hatim, who will talk to us about a wonderful um, topic today, a little bit about him. Ashraf is an AI machine learning research engineer at AI Explain Incorporated, located in Los Gatos, California. He has a master's degree in artificial intelligence from the African Master of Machine Intelligence, sponsored by Google and Meta through the African Institute for Mathematical Sciences. His interests include generative adversarial networks of GANs, text-to-speech, and improving low resource languages. I'm very happy to have you, Ashraf, and the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Chris, for the introduction, and thank you for having me. I will be presenting the adversarial text-to-speech for low resource languages. Uh, this work is done by myself and Nikola Binkowski from DeepMind. I hope at the end of this presentation, I manage to stimulate your attention to this direction of research and make you believe that it's worth to put an effort on it. Okay. Uh, this is an overview for what I will be presenting. As an introduction, I will speak a little bit about what text-to-speech is, the importance of text-to-speech, the advances in text-to-speech. I will pre provide a demo for uh, an audio generated by text-to-speech model trained on a high resource language. And in this case, it's English language. After that, I will talk a little bit about the data set scarcity problem and how we can try to make use of the high frequency similarities between languages to improve the low resource text-to-speech systems. Okay. As we all know that text-to-speech is the task of generating natural speech that is correspond to a given text. Uh, it plays uh, an essential role in a wide range of applications ranging from human computer interaction, which we can see from in the audiobooks up to the assistance of for people with vision and speech impairment, which represent the group that benefit the most from text-to-speech systems. It enables them to speak, it enables them to learn, it enables them to browse multimedia, and most importantly, it enables them to have work. Uh, Google has already provided text-to-speech functionalities for tablets and its smartphones. I want to mention in here, the African languages are poorly represented in these services. Okay. In the recent year, the text-to-speech field has been dominate, dominated by the autoregressive models for the raw waveform generation, such as WaveNet or uh, Sample RNN. Uh, this family of models achieve the state of the art performance in the text-to-speech systems. However, inference with these models is inherently slow because of the autoregressive behavior and hence the sequential generation of audio step by step. So researcher has put much effort to enable parallelism of such uh, family, which resulted in a number of non-autoregressive models such as parallel WaveNet, uh, WaveGlow. And the one that I wanna focus the most in this presentation is the adversarial text-to-speech based, uh, is adversarial, is the generative adversarial based text-to-speech models such as GAN TTS and MailGAN. These models are highly parallelizable and more suitable to run efficiency, uh, efficiently on modern hardware. And in the term of performance, it achieves a performance that's comparable to the state of the art performance. Okay, uh, let us first listen to this demo for a text to speech model trained on a high resource language. It's uh, language, it's English language. Adversarial text, to, adversarial text to speech for low resource languages can be improved by exploiting the high frequency similarities between the different languages. Okay, uh, as, we, as we can see from this demo, Deep Neural Network has revol revolutionized the field of text to speech. It's actually achieved a human level performance in this field. Uh, this is done by leveraging a huge amount of good quality data sets, for example, LG speech, speech distant. However, to have this huge amount of good quality data sets, it requires a great deal of human effort. It requires, in some cases, a professional studio and stuff. And for many languages, uh, like the African languages, we may lack the sufficient resources to do so, which limit the widespread of text-to-speech systems. 
uh, putting into, into account that the scarcity of the text to speech data set, it might be important to study the relationship between the different languages and hope that we can exploit the high frequency similarities between the different languages to improve the performance of the text to speech systems for the low resource languages. Uh, here, I want you to recall how children learn, learn to speak. By the time a child has pronounced its first utterance, he or she has already spent a long time playing with a little intonation of the language. One can argue that this uh, little intonation is shared somehow across the different languages. And to further uh, convince you about that, I will refer you to the paper wrote by Lee. In this paper, I, the, 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 the most remark that is, uh, I wanna make use of it in here, the learned foreign embedding vectors are located closer if their pronunciation are similar across the different languages. Okay. For this presentation, we will need uh, a huge amount of details, but I will try as far as possible to just mention the levels of detail that I believe it's important for this presentation to continue smooth. So I need to talk about the generative adversarial network, the text-to-speech architecture, and particularly, I, I wanna talk about the Melgan architecture, which I use the most in this presentation. Okay, as we all know that the generative adversarial network is a class of implicit generative models uh, trained by adversarial mean between two networks, the generator and the discriminator. Then as we can see from the graph, the generator tried to produce data that resembled the reference distribution while the discriminator is trying to distinguish between the real data and the generated data. In doing so, the discriminator is providing a useful signal that, follow, uh, that will follow back to generator, which will use it to improve its weight. Okay, I guess I will stop here a little bit to, to uh, give more information about two main points that I think it's important. First of all, it is an implicit gener generative models in the sense that it does, uh, it, it does not uh, it does not generate the entire distribution, but rather the but rather the GANs focus on the the part of the distribution that is essential for the task, which reduces the model uh, model capacity. And it's uh, reasonable to use such uh, models for speech because it is not important to have the entire distribution for speech to be able to provide an actual speech that corresponds to a given task. And the second thing that I wanna emphasize in here, GANs gains is, is statistical advantage from the fact that the generator does not see the, the data set directly, but rather it improves its weight by the signal that is following back from the discriminator. So one logical thing to think, one logical thing to think about is if you wanna improve the performance of the generative adversarial network is to try to improve the, improve the signal that is following back from the discriminator and therefore is to try to provide more information for the discriminator that he can learn from. Okay. Uh, text to speech, in text to speech, we are dealing with audio and we all know that audio is a challenging problem because of the high, high temporal resolution of audio and the presence of structure at different time scales. So uh, people used to, to simplify the problem by modeling a lower resolution, a lower intermediate resolution. Uh, the commonly used intermediate res uh, res uh, representation is male spectrogram and linguistic features, which uh, ended up to have two stage text to speech systems. The first stage is to move from the text to the intermediate representation, and the next uh, stage is to transform the intermediate representation again to the audio. For this presentation or for this work, we will focus on the second stage. We will focus on the uh, on the uh, intermediate representation in their inversion stage, and we will take the intermediate representation to be male spectrogram. And the model that we will use here is the Melgan. I have to mention in here they are as a family of text to speech systems that uh, try to reduce uh, the compound error of the two stages text to speech, and we have an end to end text to speech system. But for this work, I will focus on the two stages text to speech, and we'll, I will take the second, the second stage. Okay, a little bit about the architecture of the Mel GAN. It is a generative adversarial network. We have the generator and the discriminator. 
the generator is a fully convolutional network with many spectrogram as input, as I mentioned, and uh, the raw waveform as output. The discriminator is also a fully convolutional network. Uh, one thing I want to mention in here, the discriminator is three, we have a three blocks of the discriminator. We are trying to utilize a prior knowledge that we know about the speed, which is the presence of a structure at different time scales. So we have three different discriminator. Each of them is trying to distinguish between feature at different time scale to go, to go from one time scale to another. We use average boolean, strided average boolean to downsample the audio. I guess up to this point, we already have all the component that's essential for this presentation to continue, uh, to continue as smooth as possible. The rest is simple. It's just a build up on top of what I already presented. And one simple idea that is, uh, that that is essential okay uh, for the methodology i will talk about the model architecture that we used i will talk about the data sets the evaluation metrics and i, I will focus on the main experiment that provided us with the uh, best performance so far okay okay uh, as i mentioned for this work, we will focus on the Melgan architecture. So uh, our architecture is basically the Melgan architecture with a little bit of editing. For the generator, we kept the generator as it is. Nothing has changed in the generator. We will focus only on the discriminator because as I mentioned, to one way to improve the performance of GANS model is to try to improve, uh, is to try to provide more information for the discriminator. Okay. The discriminator for the the, uh, the Melgan was three discriminator. Uh, for our architecture, we used uh, an additional discriminator that, that fit with a small segment of speech, which well, in the sense that we try to capture the high the high frequency features. In addition to that, we use an amine downsampling schedule that we found it to perform better in our initial experiment. This downsampling schedule uh, ensure that there is no common dividers between the factors. Okay, so as simple as that, we use an amine downsampling schedule and we 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 added an, ex an external discriminator that works uh, on the level of the high frequency features. Okay, and how we and how we introduce the, the auxiliary data is by swapping parts of the ground truths for the segment that we subsample to pass to the additional discriminator by a small subsample that we, we subsample from the auxiliary data set. Okay, so it's as simple as that. We have two types of the segment that we pass to the additional discriminator that we added, one of one with its ground truths fixed and one with ground truths swapped by a random segment of the auxiliary data set. The mixing ratio between the number of segments that we take from the main data set and the number of segments that we take from the auxiliary data set is a hyperparameter that we optimize experimentally. Okay, by doing so, we kept the task for the, the generator as it is. Nothing has, nothing, nothing has changed in the task for the generator, and we provide much more information to the discriminator in, in hoping that it will provide much more signal that when following back to the generator, it will, it will help it to clear better features. And consequently, we have better text to speech system for the low resource languages. Okay. Uh, the data set we used, we use the Arabic language because it has global large global population. It's a complex language to model. And above all, it's a low resource language in the, in the context of text-to-speech. The main data set is Arabic data set, is standard Arabic data set of two hours. The auxiliary data set is English data set and Tunisian Arabic data set. By the way, Tunisian is one of the dialects of the Ar one of the dialects of the Arabic. We have like 26 different dialects for the Arabic language. And the last auxiliary data set is the data set that is collected by AMI students, a low quality data set, uh, a low quality data set of the standard Arabic language. For the evaluation, we use the mean opinion score. In addition to a novel quantitative metric that 
we found it to be well correlated with the mean opinion score. It is analogous to free check inception distance, which is used to evaluate the performance of the generative adversarial network in the context of images. So rather than the inception distance, we inception models, we use the we use an Arabic speed train automatic speed recognition model uh, from Hagen Face. Uh, so so that we can extract the high level features and form the distribution from which we can use the free chip distance to compare the distribution, uh, to compare the to compare the, the distance between the reference distribution and the generated distribution. Okay, so we call it conditional free check wave to wave distance, referring to the model that we use to extract the high level features. Okay. For our main experiment that achieved the best performance, we co train our proposed model with the main data set and a different auxiliary data set separately. We tried different mixing ratio between the uh, main and the auxiliary data set. Okay. Uh, here we come to the results. The baseline that we can be compared with is the Milgan. Uh, if you uh, look to the Ferris table, we have the model plus extra discriminator is our proposed model. We have our proposed model. We have the ratio. The first one is the number of segments that we subsample from the main data set and, and pass to the additional discriminator. And the second one is the number of samples that we subsample from the auxiliary data set. Uh, Fritsch wave to wave distance, it's our proposed metric. The lower is the best. Uh, mean opinion score, the higher is the best. Uh, from the first and the second row, we can see that. Uh, when we train our proposed model, uh, model only on the data set, it outperformed the Milgan architecture. And from the last two rows, you can see that adding, adding the auxiliary data set increases the performance even further. The best model is when we use a mixing ratio of one to two, uh, one segment from the main data set and two segments from the auxiliary data sets. In the second table, we fix the mixing ratio. Uh, to be one to one, and rather we change the auxiliary data set that we use, and we found that the the data set that provided the best performance is uh, is when we use the English language as auxiliary data set. Uh, one hypothesis for that is because of is because of the uh, the high quality of the English data set comparing to the rest of the data sets, but it's still it is. Uh, a remark that was more ex experiments. Okay, in this graph, I just want to highlight the importance of the mixing ratio between the main and the auxiliary data set. In the extreme case, when we only pass the auxiliary data set to the additional discriminator, it's further ruin the performance, as you can see from the green graph. And here is a demo from our model. ويقول العلماء إنه من غير المرجح أن تطور البكتيريا المعدية مقاومة ضد العلاج الجديد الذي أصبح متاحا بالفعل في شكل مرهم للأمراض الجلدية. Okay. As future work, we have to study the knowledge transfer between different languages. We have to do some parameter search. Uh, because in our last experiment, uh, we found that if we increase the additional discriminator capacity and reduce the, link, the links of the segments, we could have even better results than the one that we, we, we already had. And most importantly, we have to do more experiment to test the correlation between our proposed metric and the mean opinion score, because it is a convenient metric to use in the field of uh, Arabic speech generation. So we have to make sure that it's uh, well correlated with the mean and mean score. And after that, everyone, I believe, can use it and it's easy to use. Lastly, I just want to mention some ethical consideration. In this work, we aim to advance the field of text to speech, regardless of the potential use of such system uh, to imitate voices for bad reasons. We also acknowledge that text to speech system carry out the bias toward the dialect of the population that it's the data used to train on. 
and we hypothesize that our model is suitable to counter such effects. Finally, this model can be can be used to improve text speech system for underrepresented dialects and or accents, which uh, therefore reduce the geographical bias affecting certain population. Uh, to sum up the main point of this presentation, or, or to sum up the main point of this work, we train a fast and efficient text to speech system for Arabic language using the publicly available data sets. We propose an extension for MILGAN model, which makes it more amenable to knowledge transfer between languages. And finally, we propose a quantitative metric for Arabic speech generation based on Friedrich distance, and we call it conditional Friedrich with the distance, referring to the model that we use to extract the high level features. With this, I come to end of my presentation. Here is my references, and thank you. I'm happy to answer any question if, if they are hard ones. So thank you very much, Ashraf, for this wonderful presentation. Um, we really had a very nice discussion about reproducing your work to other languages and the complexity of working with Arabic languages and the many dialects. Thank you so much for this insightful discussion. Um, thank you very much to the audience. Um, and I'm um, see you. We will have another wonderful talk next week. So I'm um, see you there. Bye.